September analysis. Um, London session is quite busy to be honest. Quite a lot going on. Heat cop data. As well as uh, all this basically mess. I think it might just be better just to completely skip that. I'm just going to probably hit the gym. Let it do its thing. Let it play out. Let it, you know, create sentiments. Run them. And just calm down a little bit. I'll trade New York. I'll basically have to just come back and see where we are. And uh, depending on what draw liquidities that we have. You know, what the dollar is doing in terms of that as well. You know, if I have something there. What I want to do is, um, <clears throat> I want to put in a trade, okay? Making sure time and price elements are there, but I want to see how it behaves. You know, the first trade is going to be key. I think that it's going to be a lackluster day where it's just range bound because we had a good London session movement, which it probably will move a lot because of, you know, the amount of news that's coming out. Then I'm probably going to elect to just skip that New York, you know, even if I, you know, you know, if I if I take the trade and it just you know hits the target, then there it is, you know, whatever, hit the profit. But yeah, if it's stopped out or something, or if I, it's not even that. It's more about if it if it stagnates basically, if it just basically uh, does a time dilation and just consolidates sideways, then I'm just gonna elect to just skip that and just wait for the next um, high probability session, which is gonna be London. Because if the if it does actually um, consolidate, that's actually a good thing. I'm actually gonna be happy about that because. That just means I'll have a very fruitful London session, most likely. And I'll just go and trade that. So, you know, just because a session is chopping or time distorting, that doesn't mean necessarily that you have to push it more than two. That doesn't mean the end of your trading career. That just means you gotta defer your trading to the next session. As you saw last week, where, yeah, Monday, really rough for me. Tuesday, you know, we bounced back. And then the whole week, it was just amazing, beautiful delivery. Up and down, up and down. I basically just caught one move. Even after I caught one move, it was still moving. So what I'm trying to say is there's plenty of opportunity. But I don't need to be in every single trade. I just need to be a trade. I just need to basically be in the trades. In the right time, in the right place. You know, that's my model basically. Which is that I'm looking for about, you know, 10 to 15 pips. Two are ideal for the first partial. If I think it's going to run, then I'll leave another small portion on. Otherwise, I'll just wrap up the business there. I just be done with it with one trade, then I don't care how much it moves after. So that's just some general advice, okay? We did extremely well last week. You know, absolutely exceptional performance. If you can just keep that up, you know, we can just smoke through these challenges. And the good thing is once I have my um, gain thresholds built in and I have I get more used to this, basically I just get into my rhythm, basically. You know, with these accounts, because accounts are a bit funny, uh, how you trade them, basically. I have to time things, I have to set the stop, and it's just basically a bit of a challenge sometimes. So once I get into my rhythm, all I need to do is basically increase the risk a little bit. Boom. I can smoke through these challenges. They're nothing. Absolutely nothing. I have time, price, liquidity, inefficiency, draw liquidity, time and price. Boom. Let's go. Okay. So inshallah. We'll have a good week. Now let's go to the charts, okay? Charts again. Not that it hugely matters. My strategy is mostly, mostly about short-term trading, intraday session trading. So that yields me well, affords me good risk-reward models. Low resistance runs a lot of the time. So while it's not hugely important for me to have winning trades, uh, sorry, have the higher time from bias, but I definitely like to go with one just so I have the absolute highest probability in my favor. So <clears throat> last week you saw Sideways price action until the CPI, then a false sentiment um, risk off was created. But then, as you saw, it quickly faded away at the Wix CE here. And the daily fair value gap, you know, basically, we see be here, inversion. And then, of course, goes below. And the weak candle, as obviously, as you can see, bearishly closing now. Looking at how this closed, draw liquidity straight away. I'm looking at this low, you know, because we had, I think, a fair amount of distortion here. You know broke structure here so but i still think this can be treated as a fake bear flag they can very easily just use the idea for sentiment purposes and just take it higher here ideally i don't really want to have this high taken out this week because as long as we don't get taken out we don't get closed above this inversion for red gaps mean threshold as long as we don't do that as in laying a body here i think we can we can see a move here a run here run below this previous monthly low 
it has been hanging around here, so it's only about time. And we've already, already done our uh, manipulation here, as you can see. We've accumulated manipulation. Let's see if we can get distribution this week, okay? You also have this balance price range that should, you know, act as a brick wall, basically. And then a wall here as well, stopping price from going above here. That's the expectation. And this area basically generally is where your weekly resistance, you can call it that, may appear, okay? It doesn't have to, but it can appear in this area. So all you got to do is flip that logic here. GPP USD. <clears throat> these weak CEs, we know are key. And these as well here. You do have the weekly order block here as well. Hurts here. Just label that. I don't think we'll come all the way down, but it's always useful just to have it labeled there just in case. And the daily auto block here. In fact, if I'm going to go with one, I'm going to elect this. The reason for that is um, it's more precise, basically. Okay. The daily order block here. <clears throat> Could we want to come all the way down for the counterparty? Hearing purposes. Also, this high note is this area here again. I don't want to really see it go all the way there. You know, close below here. This is that will be problematic for our bullish idea. Below the daily order blocks mean threshold. That's the key for me. You do have a lot of balance price range in this region. Um, and what about now? Nah, we don't really have much here. Just this area. You have a solid balance price range here that it shouldn't close below. And then in terms of drone liquidity. Basically, you're looking at this volume imbalance. I also have the implied fair value gap using the wicks from the weekly charts, so they will be quite useful. I'm looking at the liquidity, external range, buy side liquidity. I'm talking about. Um, I think you do have a very good uh, shot here, just above this previous monthly high. If we get really, really energetic, then I think we can run this. Not to mention the fair value gap lying right above that. On the weekly chart yeah running above that would trigger basically a liquidity and an efficiency so again there's a lot of orders resting up there the order area definitely has a magnet effect to it um, of attracting price Okay, so I don't know if it'll go all the way up there. We can, you know, should we do that? Then that's something to aim for. Now, do you, we did have a decent, I would say, just a little bit above actually average movement, 195 pips. So if you if we're gonna have the same amount of movement, you know, then sounds reasonable, doesn't it? 118 pips to get to this. These four quadrants will be useful as well. I just wanna reflect here on the calendar. That was general advice. That's good. Okay, skipping London because it's just that. It's not that I can trade it. I probably would wake up and see something. You know, I might be wrong on the original idea, but I can just just as easily fade it. But it's just not necessary, in my opinion, to push it that hard when I can just easily sit back, let it do its thing, and just come back later. Um. In Tuesday, clear. Wednesday, you have new home sales. Not a huge impact it's going to have, so I can do that as well if I want to trade it. Um. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everything else is just normal. You know, there's no serious news. The the killer three news that, as I call it, the three most, you know, um, significant news events, FOMC, NFP, and CPI. As long as those three are not, are, three are not there in the rate announcement, I guess, as a fourth one. You know, it's generally going to be an okay week. It's going to be a good week. Now, it might have low range, okay, but you can still do quite well, you know, with my short-term model. I employ. Inshallah, I think it's going to be a good week. And of course, indices again, I don't need to do much on higher time frame. That's even more lower time frame than even the Forex. So that affords you good models. You don't need to have high expectations. You don't need to have bias actually many times with indices. That's a good thing I like. Um, yeah, I would just say look, if you feel pressured, if you think it's not there, leave it. 
Not leave it and think, oh shit, but if I leave it, it's gonna go without me. Fuck that shit, you're above that, you are beyond that, your skill level allows you to pretty much trade any session now. Your trading opportunities are just fucking through the roof. Through the absolute roof, bro. You do not need to worry about that. You know, so what? You know, if I see something and it's choppy, I'm not gonna fucking waste my mental capital with that and my account capital. I'm just gonna leave it. Because guess what? That's good as choppy, because that just means the next session I'll come and I'll absolutely destroy it. The next London session. Because it's gonna probably have created that accumulation for me, which it will probably distribute in Asian or London. And then I can just either join the uh, manipulation or just the distribution, which is even better. So use that to your advantage, okay? Don't let it slow you down or make you think that, oh shit, you know, this is the end of opportunity. There's no more trading opportunity. Oh shit, it's not moving. Don't think like You don't need to think like It's an opportunity. So I think we got this. We just need to basically risk uh, appropriately used stops, you know, as we found out, because in the time that the app is opening, the stop loss may not be. Because stop loss isn't there, it can just, you know, give you an extra drawdown, not that's unintended. So, yeah, you stop losses. Good luck.